Jesus? For those who are visiting, you don't understand what's going on today. For those who are visiting, my church is watching me preach and they're all trying to figure out when I'm gonna drop dead on this platform. <laughs> it's a great excuse to get out of housework. Oh, show. No, <laughs> Let me tell you about the grace of God, the power of God. Are you ready? On January 27th, Sunday, I finished preaching, and my son and I, we hopped in the car and we drove to Florida. We drive through 24 hours. We sleep in the, I can sleep when he's driving, and he can sleep when I'm driving, and drove through to Florida. We have an apartment down there, and we had a little apartment, and we got into the apartment, and we had a great time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we just had a great time. Thursday morning, I woke up, and... Uh, I wasn't feeling good. Went out, sat on the couch, and my son looked at me and said, Dad, you look terrible. I said, I just need to eat Cheerios, that's it. And I uh, got up and walked across the living room, and I blacked out. I hit the wall, I hit a table, I hit the ground, and I came to, and my son said, Dad, you were convulsing. And my face was bleeding. And I said, don't, don't worry about it. I said, I think it's just food poisoning. I went, ate Cheerios. I took a shower, went, laid down, and uh, all of a sudden, I didn't feel good. And I said to him, phone the insurance company. I think we need to go to the hospital. He phoned the insurance company, and the insurance company said, go to such and such hospital. Well, he drove me there, and I got out of the car. I said, you go park the car. I'm all right. I'm walking in. So I walked into the hospital, and the emergency ward, there was nobody there, which kind of scared me, because if there's nobody in the emergency ward, it's not that good of a hospital, I think. So it's like a restaurant. If it's empty, you don't eat there. So I get in there, and I said to the lady behind the counter, I said, hey, I think I'm having a heart attack. And all of a sudden, it was just like you see on TV. This team of people come running out through the doors. The doors open. They throw me in a wheelchair. They whip me down into this room by myself. They throw me into a bed. They're putting stuff on me. They're ripping my shirt off. It was just like TV. It was like, this is so cool. <laughs> you know, like, wow. This is just like TV. And all of a sudden, my son comes in, and, and the lady says, doctor says, we got to get the EKG. We got to get the MRI machine in there. We got to, and they're running around like, oh, it was, and I'm just lying there thinking, man, it's food poisoning. And, and all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm coming to again. And the lady's on top of me, pushing my chest to get my heart going. And she said, your heart just stopped. And the doctor says, we got to get you to the heart hospital. And, 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 and all of us, ambulance comes in and they whip me into the ambulance. And oh my goodness, have you ever been in an ambulance with the sirens going? The whole way. And I'm looking out the back window and he's going in between cars. I'm thinking, oh Jesus, we're going to have a car accident. I'm not going to die from anything but being in an How did you die? I was in an ambulance. Oh my goodness. We get there to the hospital, to the heart hospital, just like television. The doors open, they open the doors. All of a sudden, there's a team of people there, and they whip me up to intensive care unit. And they whip me into bed, and there must have been at least six to ten people in my room working on me. And in the next hour, my heart went again. And I, what they say is, I died five times. Once it took them 29 seconds to get my heart going again. One of the nurses leaned over to me and said, look, Billy, you gotta stay awake, you gotta try to help us through this. He says, uh, you're, you're dying, you're at the gate. And you know what? Here's the craziest thing, are you ready? All of a sudden, I'm lying there and I know my heart has stopped five times now. And I'm thinking, I'm going to die. 
You know, you live all your life trying to figure out what day you're gonna die, where you're gonna die, how you're gonna die. And I'm lying there thinking, I'm gonna die. And let me tell you what went through my head. I had incredible joy, enthusiasm. All I could think of is, I'm gonna see Jesus in a couple seconds. And I started to just, I started to get excited. I'm on my deathbed. And I'm, I'm like, this is so cool. Like, I'm not gonna be able to write about this, but this is so cool. I'm gonna be with the kid. I, I've lived all my life. Like Paul says, for me to live is Jesus, but to die is gain. And I'm going, Lord, I'm going to see you. I'm going to, and then the second thought went through my head, and I'm not lying at all. I started to grieve because I wasn't going to be with Shelly. And I just became really sad because I was going to miss being with my wife. My boys. I knew they were going to be all right. I, 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 I love you, but you never came into my thoughts. <laughs> all I could think of is I'm going to miss Shelly. One moment I'm excited about I'm going to see Jesus. The next moment I'm lying there going, I'm going to, and I nearly start crying to think I'm going to miss Shelly. And then the third thing came through my head, and I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth. I thought, Shelly's on the airplane flying down, right? She's not there yet. I thought, man, if I die before Shelly gets here, she's going to kill me. <laughs> I saw it in my head. She would get off the airplane. She'd walk in. She'd see me in the bed. She would say, everybody out. <laughs> she would get the electric paddle. She would turn the volts up. As I, she'd come over and start zapping me. You know, I don't care. You're dead. I don't care. You're coming back to life. I'm going to kill you. How dare you leave me a widow? <laughs> Surgeon comes in, says to me, Billy, we're rushing you up to surgery. We have to operate on your heart right away. We don't know what's wrong, but you're gonna die if we don't. So all of a sudden they whip me up to surgery and they're preparing me in the operating room and the surgeon says, Billy, we're gonna keep you awake during surgery. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to be awake. They're going to rip my chest open. And, and, oh. and then he says these words, we're going up through your leg. And I'm thinking, that's not where my heart is. Okay, like what kind of surgeon are you? Like, sir, hello, we're up here. You know. And then he says, there's a large vein in your leg. We're going to go up and look at your arteries and would you like to see your arteries? And I said, yes. And he says, here's your arteries. And he says, how old are you, Billy? And I said, 61. He says, you got beautiful arteries. He said, I can't believe this for a 61-year-old. He said, there's nothing wrong with any of your arteries. Look. And he's taking me around a tour of my, I'm dying. He's taking me on a tour of my artery. Like, can we just get to the root of this, please? Okay, you know. Let's come back to the artery some other time, okay? We do not need a show and tell. Like. He says, let's go in and see your heart. And he goes in and he shows me my heart. And he says, your heart is really big. He says, you got an athletic heart like an athlete. But he says, looking at you, you don't look like an athlete. I said, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? You know, if I could have got it, I'd smack him in the head, but he, he's got my life in his hands. And he says, your heart's beautiful. He said, there's only one problem with your heart. He said, the node. I said, what's a node? He says, it's a little part of your heart that sends out electricity so that your heart beats. See, the node shocks your heart, and then your heart beats. He says, it's working, but not all the time. 
So he says, we're going to put a temporary heart pacer up through your leg into your heart, and then tomorrow we'll operate and put in a pacemaker. So he did that, and he said, now for the next 24 hours, you just got to lie still, don't move your right leg. I went back to ICU, and they, they took care of me. I slept, and Shelly arrived, and for the next 24 hours, it, it was really dangerous, but I just laid there. I was coming in and out of sleep. They had medication to make me drowsy so I wouldn't move. And in my spirit, I could hear songs. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. As the deer panteth for it, you alone are my strength, my shield. Stuff like this, eh? I'm lying there. I said to Jesus, hey, if you want me to check out, let's do it. If you want me to stay, let's do it. See, it, it was incredible how the Holy Spirit just let me be content. I love to walk and move around, and for 24 hours, I never moved at all. Now, yes, they had a little bit of drugs in me, but I had to have some self-control. The Holy Spirit gave it to me. And all I could do is feel Christ. Next morning, Friday morning, they took me up surgery. The doctor said, go and put a pacemaker in. And he says, your heart's beautiful. He says, you've got a beautiful heart. He says, nothing wrong. Hey, Billy, you haven't had a heart attack? You haven't had a stroke? Nothing. He said, the only thing, he said, just tell your people, the only thing that happened is your heart stopped. And you need a pacemaker. So whenever this happens again in the future, your heart will boop, beep. So Saturday morning came. This is the day after operation. And Shelly's there and my son's there. And, and the surgeon comes in. This is the third surgeon comes in. And he says to me, uh, you got a beautiful heart. He says, phenomenal. He said, your arteries are incredible for your age. He says, now I'm going to tell you your, your, your change of life. And I'm sitting in bed, you know, because I know this the day I get to leave. And I'm thinking, oh, man, they're going to change my diet. I'll never be able to eat real food again. McDonald's, Wendy's, it's gone. Oh, I should have just got checked out. <laughs> and he says, are you ready for your lifestyle change? I said, yes, sir. And I'm taking this so serious. And Shelly's ready, you know, she's going to take notes and... He said, don't move your left arm above your shoulder for one month because it could dislodge the pacemaker and we want the pacemaker to grow into your body. Okay, I got that. What's number two? Go live a normal life. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, it's easy for you to clap. You just had heart surgery, right? You just flatlined five times. And some guy's telling you 24 hours later, you're normal. And I looked at him and said, no, seriously. He said, sir, go do whatever you want. What would you like to do today? And I said to him, I would like to go to the Olive Garden and have lunch. He said, you go to the Olive Garden. You order anything you want. You go have a good time. And Shelly hates the Olive Garden. And I looked at her and I said, we're going to the Olive Garden, baby. <laughs> All the salad, soup, soda, poo. Cha -cha. <laughs> and then I said to him, seriously, he said, you know what? He said, you got a beautiful heart. He said, next two weeks, just relax, go back to work on the 24th. And he said, live normal. And then one of my family said, he's not normal. <laughs> but I have forgiven her. <laughs> so somebody says to me, well, what does all this mean? Well, forget the thorn in the flesh from Satan. Just think the thorn in the flesh. Or maybe the thorn that's not in physically but emotionally. Or the thorn 
in something else. What Paul says is, in your weakness, give it to Christ. And let his power in your weakness make you strong. So don't stay weak because you're weak. But take your weakness and let Christ turn you around so you can say, although I'm weak, <laughs> because of his grace and his power, I'm strong. I'm content. I'm in self-control through the Holy Spirit. And as long as I stay in Christ, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Here, here's the craziest thing. Take it from a guy whose heart stopped five times. When you give your heart to Jesus, Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, will help you be content. The Holy Spirit will help you be in self-control. And it's all because of Christ. <laughs>